this is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at ASCO's annual meeting. We're in Chicago and now joined by Dr. Otis Browley, Chief Medical Officer of the American Cancer Society, and I'm happy to say, my friend. Hi, Dr. Browley. Hello there. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you made time for us. One of the things we want to talk to you about today are disparities, and but in particular, we want to talk a bit about prostate cancer. There's been a lot of information about prostate cancer recently with the Preventive Services Task Force and other groups. I think the things that we need to stress is whether you look at the printed advice from the American Urological Association, the printed advice from the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, the American Cancer Society, or if you look at the data from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, they actually say a lot more of the same thing than they do differ. Everybody is basically in agreement that there are harms associated with prostate cancer screening. They're, first off, the test is wrong 80% of the time. It causes a large number of men to get biopsies, which can cause sepsis and cause uh, other, sepsis is a bacterial infection. Uh, there are even men, a small number, who actually die from the biopsy. Causes some men to be diagnosed with a prostate cancer that was never going to kill them, but they want to get treated. They get needless treatment. Uh, indeed, about one out of every 100 to one out of every 200 men who get surgery for prostate cancer dies from the treatment. When you look at all the harms associated with prostate cancer, they are significant and quantifiable. When we say, what is the benefit? Does it save lives? There's still a question mark. It may. The clinical trials that have been done, most of the clinical trials suggest it does not save lives, but it still may. And so most of us are coming around to men need to know that there are known harms associated with screening. There's a possible benefit, and a man needs to make a decision about what is right for him. Now, the Preventive Services Task Force uh, just said simply, do not screen. They recommend against it. But then they say, if a man really wants to be screened, make sure he knows the known harms and the possible benefits, and then let him make a decision. Dr. Browley, it, in my mind, it's not so much the screening that's dangerous. It's what do you do as a result of the screening and the consequences and choices that could lead to ill effects as a result of the information you obtain from screening and what the action you take because of that. To a certain extent that's correct, but now if I use the screening test and a man has an abnormal screen, I'm obligated to do a biopsy. We know that 4% of men who get their prostates biopsied end up with a bacterial infection and fever because of the biopsy. I know 80% of the men who get an abnormal test are not going to have cancer. So already, just by start, just by committing to do the test, I'm committing that I'm going to do some harm to some men. Unless a man says, "No, I'd rather just do, you know, watchful waiting." Well, watchful waiting is a term we use for men who are diagnosed with prostate cancer, but we believe it's a non-aggressive prostate cancer, and they're not going to be treated. There is no watchful waiting for a man who's just thinking about getting screened for prostate cancer. I'm just proposing yeah. mm -hmm. that a man might say, well, let me get this baseline number and then, you know, let's yeah. just see. I'll come back, you know, let me recheck it in six months. A baseline number, that's, that's getting in the science that we don't have yet. That, that's uh, actually one of, the, one of my great concerns about PSA screening is people think it's so great. It has actually delayed us getting tests that actually do work. And we desperately need a test that works in this disease. What are the tests that actually do work? We don't have them right now because people have delayed doing the science to develop those tests by advocating so much use of PSA. You see, in science you have to have a bunch of people who admit that we need, have a scientific need before it's addressed. In the last 20 years, everybody's been so obsessed with doing PSA screening, we haven't gotten around to developing that test. What do you still advocate for digital rectal exam? Digital rectal exam is uh, actually somewhat useful for rectal cancer detection. Uh, digital rectal exam is certainly something that I would advocate in any man who wants to get 
prostate cancer screening along with the PSA. But not on its own. But not on its own. Another question. Someone who has a strong family history, especially if their dad had prostate cancer young, what about family risk? The unfortunate truth is we don't know if PSA screening is useful for people who have a risk due to family history. We don't know if PSA screening is more useful or less useful for people who have risk due to race. Uh, indeed, uh, when we look, for example, at black men, the harms of PSA screening are actually greater for black men than they are for white men. When I say harms of screening, I do mean the downstream medical interventions caused by screening. The question is, is the benefit greater for black men? We simply don't know. Is it true that black men are at higher risk at a younger age? Yes. Uh, about 5% of black men who are diagnosed with prostate cancer are under the age of 50 at the diagnosis. And it's about 2 to 3% of white men. Uh, the uh, median age at diagnosis for both diseases, by the way, is about 68 or 69. So the majority of blacks and the majority of whites are elderly when they're diagnosed. But there are going to be more black men diagnosed in their 40s and 50s than white men. Since we know that there is an association now between the BRCA mutation and the incidence mm -hmm. of not only the female cancers but uh, the possibility of prostate cancer, what do you do if you know someone is BRCA positive and he happens to be a man? What do you recommend in regard to prostate screening for someone who may have this genetic risk? See, the difference between me and some other doctors is I believe that we should tell the patient, well, we don't have an answer. We don't have an answer for men who are at higher risk for BRCA because of BRCA, except we do know that they're at higher risk of prostate cancer because of BRCA. Does PSA work better for them? We don't know. There's actually a wonderful study I know that's trying to address that question in that population right now, but we don't have the answer right now. I think a man who has, who's at high risk because of race, because of family history, because of known genetic mutation, that man needs to realize that he needs to make a educated guess or a choice, and some people are going to be upset that I'm saying it's an educated guess, but that's exactly what it is because we in science do not know. And I am really, I really want to emphasize one thing. In science, we need to start talking about what's scientifically known, what's scientifically not known, and what's believed, and in certain instances, who believes it. A man who doesn't screen for prostate cancer, how would the disease present then? What are the symptoms? Yeah. This is important because a man who has difficulty urinating, extreme difficulty urinating, has blood in his ejaculate, has blood in his urine, that man should be evaluated for prostate cancer. And by the way, the FDA 20 years ago approved PSA for evaluation of that man who has symptoms. It has never approved PSA for screening because it requires a clinical trial to show that screening saves lives, which we don't have. Uh, in mammography and in breast cancer, we have eight studies that tell us that screening saves lives, most of them for women in their 50s, but we have eight studies that say mammography saves lives. In prostate cancer, we've had several studies to look at it. We have one European study that slightly suggests that it might save lives, but is not in no means definitive. The European study has some internal inconsistencies. So what exactly is the American Cancer Society's, the ACS, recommendation for prostate cancer screening? Our recommendation is that a man should be informed of the known harms and the possible benefits a prostate cancer screening, and a man should be encouraged to make a choice as to whether or not he wants the test. If a man decides he wants the test, he should be supported in that decision. If a man decides he doesn't want the test, he should be supported in that decision. At what age would be the recommended? We recommend that men uh, start having this conversation with their doctor at the age of 50. Men who have a family history of the disease uh, might want to start having that conversation earlier, perhaps at age 45. Thank you. I love your 
intensity and passion <laughs> and pushing your hot buttons, Dr. Otis Browley. Thank you. Chief Medical Officer of the American Cancer Society. Thank <laughs> you.